danger zone. I have no idea if that's going to stay in. That needs to stay in or it needs to stay, go up front as the clip, the lead in. <laughs> I think that, and, and I think honestly, that's the only thing we're allowed to, you know, before we get like, that's the, with yeah, that's the amount. <laughs> Welcome to Casual FC, an Angel City preview pod. I'm your host, Mario Salazar, with the ever knowledgeable and amazing <laughs> Angela Morazzi. <laughs> <laughs> I could <laughs> I couldn't hold that one in. I don't know. Thank you. Thank you for that exquisite compliment. It's more way more knowledgeable than I am, so it definitely is holds true in this context. <laughs> oh man. Well, we are back with a little recap, a big precap. On the last episode of Angel City FC, we played the Chicago Red Stars in Chicago at SeatGeek Stadium. It was Sarah Gordon's first time back in Chicago since she was traded to Angel City since she didn't play last season. We came out of that with one point. We are still undetweeted. Still undetweeted, baby. Like, obviously, I would have loved a win because we would have been in sixth place solidly. But I'll take the point and stay in contention. The last 30 minutes of that game were insane. So the day of this game, Mario and his wife and me and my girlfriend and my mom all went to go see a musical together or a play, a play together in downtown LA. It was fantastic. We had a great time. Eva had to run because, yeah, she had a rehearsal to prepare for like a big thing. Uh, Mario and his wife went and met Neil Patrick Harris. Yeah, and I. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it I was mean, a very eventful day. <laughs> it was. It was actually very nice because, like, we were walking around, and uh, Jen was like, "Hey, do you just want to go check out that uh, that door we saw last time?" Because we honestly didn't know where the stage door was. Mm-hmm. We went over, and there was a line, and we're like, "If there's a line, let's stand in the line." And then we <laughs> we got to meet Neil Patrick Harris. So there you go. Yeah. Fantastic. But like the play was so good. We had such a good time. We all kind of like go our separate ways. My mom and I were heading to hopefully get to Rock and Brews in El Segundo where Angel City was hosting a watch party because I had friends there. We were going to like podcast stuff if we could. Like it was one of those like, let's get there. We get in the car. Like Eva calls me to tell me that Ali Riley had just scored, but they were reviewing it in VAR. I text Mario like there's like crazy text messages and phone calls going back and forth across downtown L.A. And then we get into halftime. We're up one nothing. And then the second half started. They equalize. We And uh, they equalize in the 69th minute after one sub comes in. And on the iHeartRadio broadcast, they're literally saying like, oh, yeah, when these specific players come in, like it's always like a jump start for the team. They're the people who come in in the second half and score. Not like 10 seconds after the substitutions were made, the goal was scored. And then we immediately go up again, like two minutes later with a Junendo goal. By this time, we are like on the outskirts of El Segundo. And I'm like, mom, drive faster. Like we're like <laughs> ah, in the car. I'm freaking out. She's like, oh, my God, we're hitting every freaking red light you can think of. We we get to Rock and Roos. We got great parking somehow, some way. But then we get there and we sit down, find our friends, sit down, and immediately they equalized again. <laughs> <laughs> but hey, it wasn't a loss. We came out of there with points and that's what mattered. Yeah, yeah. Mine mine was somewhat similar where, like you said, right, you texted me about Riley and I was like, all right. And then we were driving to Pasadena and then, 
you know, it, it, it went to, to half, it was during halftime, couldn't really listen to it or, or, you know, something happened to my phone and I just couldn't listen. And then we stopped by actually to go get some like boba. And then by the time I got back into my car, first thing that, that comes on when I turn on the car and the phone connects again was endo score. And I was oh, like, yes. Man. And so like, <laughs> as we, as we pull out of the little parking structure, I pull over to the side of the road. One, because, you know, we have to finish our boba before we get home or else the kids are going to see and then they're going to be like, what the <laughs> hell, where's mine? Um, but also because I want, we wanted to listen to the rest of the match. And then a few minutes later, they equalize it. And I was like, oh, sitting there just like, like, why can't I watch this on my phone? And it's basically because I didn't have CBS Sports. But yeah. Yeah. I don't think anybody likes it when games are on CBS Sports. No. Like, yeah. honestly, no one. But we came out of Chicago with a point. That's what matters. We're still in playoff uh, contention. We're still in the running. Still in the running. Where so... are we in the standings? Like, give me the deets. Yeah. So still in tweeted in 11 now, which is insane. an insane stat to have. Uh, we're currently still in eighth place. We're technically tied for seventh. But because of goal differential, we're in, in the eighth spot. And guess who we're tied with? Orlando, who is the next team we're going to be playing. So, bum, bum, bum. yeah. So this matchup is a full-on six-pointer. Like, mm-hmm. make or break, basically. Both teams, Orlando and ourselves, are one point out of playoff position, which would be sixth place. So I went back to my current favorite, I'm calling it the, my my digital fidget spinner because it's <laughs> basically a website with just pure buttons. Like you just push push a <laughs> bunch of buttons and let numbers kind of move up and down and, and let your mind go wild. Now, I did pull off a really crazy, like, like wild version where we got like a- Angel City ended up in first place for the entire league. Of course, that's not going to happen <laughs> with the two. You never know. What, Anything n- could happen. Okay. It's not likely. It's, it's, <laughs> it wasn't likely then. It's way more not likely now. But you know what? There was two. There's too many permutations for it to actually make sense at this point anyways. Right. <laughs> Again, this uh, was created by our favorite statistician infographic person, um, Allison Gale. So check her out on in, on Twitter, agale137. Amazing just info when it comes to women's sports um, and then just visualizing it. But what I do want to say, even though there's so many permutations and there's so many ways things can go, the most straightforward way, but uh, looking at the whole thing, we are still in charge of our own destiny. And that is what's important. Last year, we were not in charge of it. So we were doing this almost fraught this 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 fraught playoff run last Mm -hmm. year where we were begging and scratching and clawing for every point to try to make it in but it didn't matter what we did because ultimately it depended on what other teams did right this time right right, right. this time we are 100 percent in charge of our destiny at this point so what i ended up doing was going down the list and there were no ties. I didn't put any ties throughout the rest of the the last three match weeks. I automatically made the higher seeded team win, right? Like we're just saying like, hey, they're the better team in the table. They're the ones that have a better chance of winning. So I did that across the board. So Portland won all their matches. Oh, except for ours. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> San Diego won all their matches, you know, all, all, all the teams that were above us or or just above on whoever they were playing got their point. OK, probably went too long on that, but there you go. With all of that being said. If if we remain undetweeted for the rest of the season for these last three matches, we are in at the most, we can only draw one more time. But you know what? The best solution to that is just win all three. I mean, you can't can't really argue with that. No, you can't. Like, let's just win out. Yes. I mean, we said it before. Like, we win out. We have the best chances of anything. 
Yes, we've got the momentum. We we have the drive. So it'll just make things amazing. So yes, we will solidly land in like fourth or fifth place as long as we remain undetweeted and have only one draw. Fourth place will actually let us host a match mm-hmm. in the playoff rounds, which would be crazy exciting. Uh, the way the playoffs works for the NWSL since a couple of years ago when they expanded it to six positions, the, the top six versus um, just the top four is first and second place will get a bye. So they don't play the first round. Third plays sixth, fourth plays fifth, and, you know, third and fourth get to play at home first. And then, and then after that first round, you go into the bracket where you are now in the semifinals mm-hmm. and then the final. So to kind of get granular with all of this, three matches left. We've got two home games and one away. Out of those, if we win all three, we're in. Uh, we we can best we can end up with is fourth. We can most likely get fifth if we win all three. The rest of these really count on us only drawing one of these, right? I said we have to go into undetweeted, but undetweeted means only one more draw. If we draw one of them, we end up in fifth. Now, this is this is really pushing it, and I do not recommend... So, Be- Becky, if you're listening, <laughs> do not recommend this last version. <laughs> but if we lose one and win two... So if we win, say, both home games and we lose the one on the road, there is a possibility that we squeak in in sixth place. My I God, don't recommend so it because, like I said, I only did <laughs> so many permutations of this. I yeah, cannot, there's still a margin of error. I cannot guarantee know. this. I am going <laughs> I am going off a digital fidget spinner. So <laughs> take that for what it's worth. But yeah, so... In the words of my 227 neighbor and now very good friend, Richie, I feel the need, the need for Tweed. So let's go. I need to put the- Let's F and go. I need to put the little sound clip of Highway to the Danger Zone. (laughs) Okay, so with all of that, we're heading to our next match at home, BMO Stadium. It, it got moved because both teams want to put their best foot forward since we're both in this race to the playoff chaos. And both of us have way more, you know, for at least for us, way more international players than I thought we were going to have on leave. So we're... Yeah, because all of the, the international windows right now are Olympic qualifying or the qualifiers to qualify, like... The whole, there's so many like Gold Cup, CONCACAF, like all the things yes. happening right now. So every national team is being called up. It's not just like a small amount. Yeah, yeah. So we've <laughs> we've, everybody. we've got a good a good handful. Like Alyssa's gone, Emsley's gone, MA is gone. I know. Which was a huge win. Shout out to MA for getting her first cap yes. and her her call up. June is gone. I think is gone. So mm-hmm. all all of that is to Scarlet. say, yeah, 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 Scarlet, and she scored. Mm-hmm. So all of that is to say, both Angel City and Orlando said, "Hey, both our teams are decimated. Let's give this a week. Get our yeah. all our players back home, or at least you know back to our teams, and let's put our our best foot forward for this for this run." So we are playing Orlando at BMO. Hit me with what we need to know. <laughs> okay, so Mario kind of alluded to this earlier, but this might be one of the biggest games of the season because this is that quintessential textbook example of a six-point game. Like, we win, we jump spots, we like we get the three points, but we also get ahead, like three points ahead of Orlando. And it gets us closer to playoff contention, depending on how the other games go over the weekend. Like, it could get us very, very much into the playoff mix. Like, we're right on the cusp. Like, yeah, we're we're in eighth place, tied for seventh, whatever. But 
there's like a one point difference. There's no room for error right now. And there's no room for us to think that just walking away with a draw is fine. And I, I mean, the team knows that. We all know that. We got to win this one to stay in the playoff picture. That's really like the talking point is like, yeah, we need to score to make up the differential, but we need to score and prevent the other team from scoring. Eva mentioned a quote from a previous national team, U.S. national teams player in the retrospective we did where it's like, yeah, if we score, we can win. But if we prevent the other team from scoring, we can't lose. And that's the mentality that Angel City needs right now, because we I think everybody even like the team itself has been like, we should have won in Chicago. We shouldn't have given up those late goals. So I have a feeling they're going to come in and lock down. BMO like w- I I am not going to be surprised if we come out there looking terrifying which is I love it <laughs> yeah yeah I mean I mean our defense going to be on point for sure I, there's it's just a matter of the offense another one of these I have no idea who where I heard it from but there's a quote out there somewhere that I shouldn't be able to attribute to someone <laughs> that you know attackers score goals but defenders win games you know, because exactly. it's the whole and point. You wonder why I love defense <laughs> so much. Like, this is why this like the last three games are going to be the example of why I'm like over here crying over defenders constantly like, oh, my God, they're so great. But like all in all, if I'm being very real, I love this team so much. We can sit here. We can talk stats. We can talk standings. What needs to happen? Who to look out for all of that? But like we all know. Just show up on Monday, scream your heart out, like cheer this team on with your whole heart. They're going to need it. We've got to carry them through this game. And then who else we play? Houston? In Houston, right? Yes. Yeah. So like we have to cheer loud enough on Monday to carry them all the way to Texas and back because there's no reason why we shouldn't beat Houston. Just saying. (laughs) <laughs> just saying just saying you know but like we said undetweeted all three let's go yeah like let's win out so folks to watch on orlando i said it earlier i will never not talk about marta for a million reasons if you didn't catch on during the world cup or in our retirement episode <laughs> all of that <laughs> For a lot more information on Marta, definitely check out our retirement retrospective. There's just so much badassery in that episode. I cry. I cried this weekend for JJ and for Pino's last U.S. national team game. There's lots of tears. It's very funny, though. But Marta, for those who don't know or didn't want listen to those other episodes, she is a six-time NWSL Team of the Month member, a four-time Goal of the Week honoree. And on an international level, she is a six-time FIFA Player of the Year winner. Marja can do anything she wants to, and I don't think anybody's going to stop her. Like, She's she just probably eats all around free. badass. Yeah, like she eats free in all of Brazil and Orlando and Sweden. Like anywhere she's played, they're like, oh, here you go, red carpet for you. Yeah. As- Velvet rope. Like as, as, as we, it should be. Yeah, as we mentioned in the retirement retro, she's your favorite player's favorite player, which means yeah, which says a lot about who she is and why she's so important and to the game, but why she's also going to be so important to this particular matchup, <laughs> this particular <laughs> game. <laughs> yeah, definitely. She's she's a force to be reckoned with. She this season she's on like kind of on a revenge tour the way Sarah Gordon is coming back from an ACL injury but like March is just dope she's just cool she does everything she can to grow the game and she's just also like one of the best players in women's soccer history soccer history in general just she's just royalty in my eyes all right next on the list is Allie Watt she is another forward for Orlando we're being very offensive to with these Orlando players off offensive not offensive offensive. (laughs) (laughs) maybe that was on purpose i don't know who knows a little freudian slip i don't know but she recently like their last game she just scored the fastest goal in club history versus north carolina she is 
having a hell of a season. So definitely someone to watch out for. Last person I want to talk about who's currently on the team is Messiah Bright. She is a rookie this season, but she is in the race for the Golden Boot, which is the player who scores the most goals across the season. She's having a a freaking great season as a rookie. Like I have mentioned before, Orlando kind of had a fire sale over the last couple of years. There are a ton of Orlando players on Angel City in Allie Riley, Danny Weatherholt, and Sid. But like that whole team just kind of got in, like imploded and just scattered everywhere across the NWSL for some of the reasons we know, some were unknown, but what have you. Messiah Bright is a very special player. She actually got swept up by Orlando in the draft super late. Like, for some reason, she dropped super low, so they kind of got her on a steal. But she's, I mean, she's paying off for them tenfold. But those are the players I wanted to talk about. I also really wanted to talk about Erin McLeod. But she just moved to Iceland with Gunny, her wife, who also used to play in the NWSL at the end of last year or earlier this year. So I hope they're having a great time in Iceland with all of their, like, (laughs) rights and northern lights and, like, cool stuff <laughs> <laughs> so with so with Aaron or you know the, here's another offseason idea of pulling in those players that we wanted to see <laughs> that might have yeah. left and then being like <laughs> these are how badass they were or they are right. go check them right. out in their in their other leagues if they're if they're yeah. playing we should totally do a spotlight other leagues that'd be cool because I, I, I mean, mean women's soccer doesn't stop yeah and there's there's plenty of players that have that are crazy important to us here in the NWSL and, and, you know, as I'm learning about each one of them, but also, you know, players that are in the, the WSL in, in England or, mm-hmm. you know, the Spanish league or, or, you know, for the France or wherever they end up playing and just how amazing they are in their own right. I mean, you saw all of those uh, players on display during that world cup. So uh, yeah, I think that would mm-hmm. be a great episode. So you went full forward this time. So all <laughs> all these players, when they're on the field, they're going to be easy to spot because they're the ones going to be trying to pepper the goal. Mm-hmm. And whoever we've got, you know, whether it be Edie or Anderson. Yeah, Angelina. Yes, because <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't know what happened with. I don't know what's going on with, with Eisenhower, our Second, Tec- third goalie. There's three of second, them. Technically second yeah. on the list, but yeah. I don't know what's been shaken up there. Who knows? Who knows? But yeah, whoever is in the goal will have a challenge. We'll have these them. three to to challenge with. So we've got M- M- Marta with, again, single name. That's all you need to know. <laughs> number 10. Then we've got Ali Watt as number 11. And then Messiah Bright number 23 all three of them forwards yep so we joked the last re- a pre-cap episode that i had no idea what players i had talked about which ones i hadn't i found out that i hadn't spoken about one very important person because it's kind I of a shock thought, too yeah like i thought i had but then i realized it was because of the world cup because we started this podcast and then immediately the World Cup started. <laughs> so our captain, my captain, Allie Riley. I have not talked about her as like Angel City. I, I, we, we, I talk, don't know. we talked about her with a little bit of, um, on Angel City, but a little bit more with her New Zealand captain yeah, duties. Exactly. And what we were about to see going into the World Cup. But, and then of course, going on with that amazing win and, you know, the, the emotions that yeah, she had. Yeah, me crying everywhere, <laughs> Allie Riley crying everywhere. I talked about her a lot about during the beginning of the World Cup. But, Cap, I'm sorry, I haven't talked about you on this podcast. I It was a mistake. It will never happen again. <laughs> but yeah, Allie Riley is basically everyone's best friend, like including fans. Fans, coaches, ownerships, players, everybody. Like, she just is so cool and like 
to have a nickname be Smiley Riley <laughs> and live up to that in every sense of the word is just she's just the best. Like she just seems so lovely. Earlier in this season, our friend Doug, I say our because he's a friend of the podcast <laughs> and he's my friend and Eva's friend. So it just collectively our friend. It, it, yeah. Um, I'll accept it. Yeah. Yeah. So hi Doug. He's my friend too. But it was <laughs> he it was his birthday earlier in the season and his wife Alyssa arranged for him to take two people down on the pitch with him after the game, kinda of hang out, schmooze a little bit. It was very fun. Eva and I got fake tattoos. I had Happy B Day Doug on my hands. She had Doug above her for or above her eyebrow on her forehead. Like we went all in for Doug's birthday and Doug was like, you have a face tattoo? You're absolutely coming with me. So she went down with him. And when they were down there, like, we're all, like, Alyssa and I are just like, this is so cute. It was just fun. But they got to talk to Allie, and Eva told Allie that she's one of my favorite players. And she was like, where is she? And, like, blew me kisses. And then was like, wait, I'm not interrupting anything. I'm not (laughs) causing a problem in this relationship. It was, like, joking like they were best friends. So it's like every interaction you can imagine with Allie Riley is just fantastic. Um, She's an LA native. She went to Harvard Westlake, which is like the high school in Los Angeles. If you want to be a professional athlete at this point, it's private school up in the Valley. I remember in high school, my high school played, I don't even know, I think it was football against Harvard Westlake and just got demolished. (laughs) It was embarrassing. It was just like, oh, and like, we knew. We knew going into this, this is going to be so ugly. Like, I don't know if it was it was basketball or uh, football, but it was ugly regardless. Harvard Westlake is a machine when it comes to pumping out athletes. Like, just <laughs> absolute machine. But Cap had her very first NWSL goals last season. She had two of them. So she has three goals. I think she needs to score another one. Because she's got to have as many as she did last season just... For reasons. I mean, she got the so, gold last game, so I know there's a little, 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 and little VAR controversy there, but like <laughs> they, she got it, so she got it. And for as many goals as VAR has taken from us, we got one back. <laughs> yes, yeah, we not, got one back, and that's really all that matters. <laughs> not very much that VAR actually goes in our direction, but we got no. it. No, yeah, and after that first goal that she scored, I think she just like jumped into outer space she was so high in the air she's just so joyful in the way she plays she is a staunch defender and so good at what she does but i couldn't i mean one i couldn't go an episode without talking about defense i am who i am (laughs) two it is so embarrassing that i didn't talk about her to this extent but that's cap she was also one of the the early like tifos for this year too like she was like yeah. the, the supporters painted ally in her like full-on like screaming celebration oh, with her Alexa. arms in the air and yeah that was that that was great to to see her to go up because a lot of you know whenever those things are done by the supporters they're always done in in secret mm-hmm. because they you know they want it to be a surprise to the fans want it to be a surprise to the team so, you know, the team doesn't have any involvement. The, the front office doesn't have any involvement with it. And then it goes up. And then, you know, that gave Angel City so much social media content on, oh, yeah. on getting everybody's reaction because oh, they didn't yeah. see it until they came out on the pitch. So, mm-hmm. And then they saw it and it was like, oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, it, that TIFO was so dope. So dope. So good job, supporter group. I like the surprise because I can never go... Like being part of the supporter groups, I can never go to the things. Yeah, like, the, the, the they just don't work out. They just like, don't work out time wise. Yeah, on a Tuesday night in Alhambra, and I live by LAX, and that's not going to happen. Like, <laughs> or something random. But regardless, every supporter group puts in such hard work, and I'm when it comes to TFOs, and it's just so dope, and I love it, and it's it's very very cool. Alrighty. So the other person I haven't talked about, there's also more, but these two, I was confused, but (laughs) from from Harvard West, like both of these were like, well, actually everybody on this list. So what, you know, I I did what I said I was going to do. And I went back through our scripts 
you know, <laughs> when when I had some time, but honestly didn't really have time, <laughs> went back through our scripts and loaded all of the names on our kind of, you know, episode chart database thing and then tagged everyone on what game we talked about them. And there was a handful of players that we haven't talked about. Honestly, we haven't had that many episodes, mainly because we started halfway through the season. But still, there was a lot of surprises on that list where we were like, wait, no, (laughs) didn't we talk about them for like a full episode? Yeah, there's people that I could have sworn that I talked about. And I'm like, oh, oops, and and we did, And technically we did, but we also talked about them in a different context. We talked about them in the World Cup context. Exactly. We've never talked about them in this kind of home stakes type game. So, yeah, mm-hmm. this is another another one on that list that we will <laughs> definitely get through. Yeah. So, like I said, Harvard West, like pumping out professional athletes left, right and center. The second person I'm talking about is Alyssa Thompson, who had just graduated from Harvard West. Like, so her and Allie Riley have a lovely connection through that. Alyssa has missed prom missed most of her senior year her senior season graduation all of that to be a professional soccer player which is like the dream I for mean, anyone who's dedicated this much time to it like i if i had been in her shoes i would have been so pumped yeah like every I mean, dream yeah I mean, check just, those boxes just even for the, the the flex to be like oh what did you do uh for your senior year oh i went to the world cup <laughs> oh, oh! you went to the World Cup? That was cool. How how did you like it? Oh, no, I played in the World Cup. I played. Yeah. Like, oh, no, no. I didn't. I like my my ticket was paid. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't have to, to buy my tickets. No. So Alyssa is the sweet, sweet baby child of this team. Our, our like barely an adult, small human from the Valley who will run through just about any defense with absolutely no fear. She is an incredibly impressive player to watch because she just goes. She doesn't have that, like, I don't want to say fear because it's not that, but the trepidation that comes with age, with injury, with experience, it's still so fresh for her that she just goes, you know, and it's it's to the point where, like, you can tell that she's been playing with players who weren't at the same level as her. They would have been close but not folks who could push her to that next level. And now she's at that level. And it's cool because there's like defenders are seeing strategies from her that they're not used to seeing. And she's seen, you know, like you see the battle on offense and defense when she comes in the first goal she scored. I think she ran through five different defenders, like stupid. We all joked in our, in our like friend group that she is so good because she still has cartilage in her. Like (laughs) she's part of the cartilage crew of Angel City. Like she's, she's young. She still has like, you know, good joints, very few aches and pains. I think Angel City. That was actually, that was actually a joke from Angel City too on there. Like I remember seeing on their social media where like, like, they're like, all right, all right, everyone, it's time to get out, like, it's time, time to train. And then she's, like, the first one out the door, like, mm-hmm. juggling, the, ju- juggling the ball. And everybody's, like, Ugh. and they start taping Everybody themselves else up. Everybody doing, like, like, all doing their activations and, like, trying to get ready and get their muscles warmed up. And she's, like, okay, bye. And just, like, <laughs> running through the screen. I watched that video. It's hysterical. But I'm really, really curious because she's coming off, like, Gatorade Player of the Year as a high school player, like, all, all of these accolades, which have rightfully been earned. Like, her sister is also training with the team. Like, this is very much a gifted family when it comes to sports. I'm very curious to see how she is going to impact this final push of these last three games. Because I think her experience on the pitch at the World Cup kind of, like, threw her off a little bit. And even with other call-ups that she's had, because it wasn't consistent, like it had been at Angel City, and it was, how do I say, not conducive to her style of play, scoring. She entered the national team in a very tumultuous time. Yes. Yeah, very, (laughs) very, 
Yes, tumultuous is is a is a good word. I I just looked it up, and yes, she did. Well, she did get minutes during um the World Cup. I know that was one of the 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 point talking points, at least from our side here in LA, right? Which was yeah, why the why the hell didn't she get to play more? Like you took her there for and you, you nothing, right? But there was mm-hmm. there was a lot more questions that came out of that than just <laughs> why wasn't Alyssa playing? Yeah, what it was like a laundry list of why wasn't and her name here playing yeah, yeah but then uh, it does say that like the the next two friendly matches that happened mm-hmm. recently she actually got the start in both of them and played a total of like 150 something minutes yeah so you know having i think i think when you get her and actually use her in the 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 way it you know she's built for and the the, the craziness right and the the uh, attacking speed and the dribble and the everything she's able to do like that's really what you should be using her for and you mm-hmm. know glad that we have her on our team i mean i know it was like i know <laughs> right. it was a big huge like a huge thing when like it happened during the draft where like we got like it's like mm-hmm. oh, first pick oh okay, Alyssa. like there was no like drama yeah, like, about it it was just no, like Alyssa. no Alyssa thompson just just <laughs> that like uh, okay uh, angel city Alyssa thompson just boom yeah everybody knew we traded for that first pick. I'm so glad we did. But yeah, and I'm so glad she chose to stay with the team. And as she said, you can always go to college and she can take classes online. Like, this is not a, a chance you get forever. So good for her. But yeah, so player numbers, Allie Riley, I'm doing this one. I'm stealing <laughs> this one from you. She is number five on her jersey. Number one in our heart defensive queen Allie Riley there you go I just had to say it I wrote it you you wrote it you had to say it yes and then I would think about this all day (laughs) and then along with the other forwards that we have Alyssa Thompson's going to be breaking ankles on that back line for from Orlando she's a forward number 21 she's the baby of the team like she's the youngest one that's like just running out there and you're like wait did someone just run onto the field no it's Alyssa thompson as soon as she like nutmegs someone or yeah or breaks over. an ankle you're just like oh wait yeah Alyssa thompson yeah 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 you remember real quick real who quick. she is and where she's from definitely so history between these two teams across all matchups we're one one and one so i mean I know where I want that next number to land. Yeah. <laughs> I want us to win. <laughs> we won earlier this season when we played in Orlando. So why not do it again? Yeah. I mean, like I said earlier, we need to be undertweeted in these in this yeah. last run. So, you know, Let's give us go. give us another another notch on that win column and mm-hmm. we are good to go. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm I'm very excited for this game. I think everybody kind of is because of the fact that it got pushed back a week and a half. Like eh, there was controversy around why if it should have been moved or not, but I think it was actually a really good decision. But yeah, I'm I'm really bummed that we're in like the final stretch of the season, but I don't think we're we're done after after the 15th. I think we've got some playoffs in us. So yeah, I yeah. think I think we do too. And honestly, it's it, this is going to give us our best chance and our best foot forward to make that run. You know, we've been talking from the like essentially middle of the season, from the like international break for the World Cup. That it's mm-hmm. that far back. It's been a race to the playoff chaos. Like it's just yeah. going to be crazy. So and we're in it. Like and we're we are in, it. in yes. the chaos. We are the chaos machines. Actually, when it comes to this playoff run, like. We're the ones who could spoil it for people. We're the ones who can make it. And I really think we're going to, genuinely. Okay, so the matchup is going to be Angel City versus Orlando Pride at home, BMO Stadium, on Monday, October 2nd. Just remember that. It's a Monday at 7 p.m. So if you're going to the match, Monday traffic, you're going to get people hating the fact that they have to go back to work on Monday. You're going to have... <laughs> Your school is going to be, you know, you're right next to USC, so you're going to have all that school traffic. Just make sure you get there as early as you can. Um, Kickoff will be at 7 o'clock. 
remember that uh, this match, it was postponed from the 21st, but it's still the night, which is Latin American, Hispanic heritage. You know, we, it, the Latinos, you know, we're, we're, we're chronically late as like a trope. <laughs> And so as like a culture, (laughs) as a culture. And so like, and that just means that just means we just take life easy. But that also means that our month of celebration or observance or like learn about us that if you're not us happens halfway through a month to the other half of the month. It's not one full month, like evenly. It's it's halfway through calendar month. Yeah, it's halfway through September into uh, half of October. So. We're still within that window, which is great. Um, yeah, we're halfway through. Yep, there, uh, there's <laughs> going to be there's going to be a street fair, I believe, which means if that, that does happen, there's going to be food trucks out on Christmas Tree Lane, not big old full fledged tailgate fan fest that they usually do, but this is like the pared down version, which is still a party. Which is still like, a party. Yeah, we say it's you know toned down, but it's not. Like yeah, but people are still there. And uh, as as another note, if you haven't been or if you're not familiar, the field is open now. So the mm-hmm. food hall that is right next to where the the beer garden the is. beer garden is and the team store is is now mm-hmm. open. There are three tacos way, the burger place? the pizza place and a burger place. Yeah. So There's triple food. bean pizza, who's triple bean in pizza. There? there we go. Yes, is fantastic. I'm trying to lead a campaign to get the powers that be at LAFC to make sure that they have their gluten-free pizza because they do a really good job with cross-contamination for those who have allergies. And it's not a cardboard crust. It is so good. (laughs) It's a Roman. So their pizza is Roman style and it's delicious. If you haven't been to Triple Beam, there's one in Highland Park and one in Echo Park. Go there. They're good people. It's good pizza. Yeah. there's. I don't know about the other places, but they're probably great too. (laughs) Tacos Way is actually pretty solid, and and we go to the Tacos Way that's here up in, uh, in Reseda, and it's it's real good, yeah. Um, and then I, I know there's a third partner in there that's just not ringing a bell at the moment, but the, there is. I want to say it's it's a burger place, and there's a really famous chef connected to it, and I can't think of who it is. I want to say it's Susan Feniger, but I don't think that's her. She's a different. She makes Mexican food. Ah. Like, <laughs> But her food is dope. Her food is so good. <laughs> all in all, there will be some food trucks. There will be some porta potties out there. There will be some <laughs> beer flow in. There will be the food hall will be open. So you'll have a nice place to sit inside. Again, all of this happens just before the game. The game's going to be at 7 p.m., which is the kickoff. Gates open 90 minutes before. So you can get into the stadium at 530. And with that, they are giving away a specially themed designed uh, picture frame. It's kind of a small one. It's more for like those kind of Polaroid pictures, I think. I mean, I haven't seen it myself. They kind of flash it. Yeah, I think it's like a four by six. Yeah, they like flashed it onto the on the screen like the, the last match. Like they were holding it mm-hmm. out down on the field. But I mean, giant Jumbotron, like you can't really <laughs> tell scale. But there you go. Giveaway. Get there early if you want one. Um, they usually kind of disappear halfway through because... You know, they ordered what they ordered. Um, there's also some really great merch for that for this mm-hmm. night. It was designed by a Salvadoran uh, artist, female artist. They are amazing. The scarves sold out online, and then they replenished them, and they sold out again. So I'm they re- sold out like immediately because I got the notification because I forgot to order it. And I was like, oh, I got to go order it. And they were already gone. And I was like, oh, I guess I have to get there so early yes. and try and get the like five that they're going to have in the store yeah so i'm really hoping they have some in the store and if they do i am charging you with getting me one because i will yeah be there. i got you i know if they i'm i'm gonna go directly after work i'm off early that day i'm gonna go immediately after work to the game and stand at that door until they let me in and be like give me a give me a scarf <laughs> yeah i got i'll get you one <laughs> Yes. So unfortunately for such a big game, I will not be there. And uh, one of the reasons why is just, you know, family stuff can't make the midweek games are uh, way harder. But we also ran our first successful Instagram contest, which was really fun. Thank you for everyone that entered. We did get a winner who won my tickets, essentially. (laughs) 
<laughs> <laughs> so they will be sitting in my seat enjoying this matchup of all matchups for the season. And uh, hopefully uh, Anthony, his, his name is Anthony. He was the winner. Hopefully you have a blast there. And thank you for the supporting the pod. Everybody else who joined, thank you for supporting the pod. I know a lot of people that were supporting us were entering it because they were tagging other people to spread the word and they weren't necessarily, they don't necessarily need the tickets, but it meant a lot just to have the engagement that we did. Um, so thank Absolutely. you so much for everyone uh, for the support. Even if, you know, you, you didn't win, we've got new stickers. Check out our Instagram. We're free to give them to whoever, whoever <laughs> uh, wants one. So please hit us up and let us know. If you can't make the game like myself, Here's the broadcast schedule. It will be the national game on CBS Sports. Ah, oh, Jesus. <laughs> You're just talking. I'm so sorry. You're I'm not trying to laugh this. at your pain. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so national game on CBS Sports. That means if you're at a bar, they will definitely be able to show the game. They're not going to have any weird, weird streaming issues because it's on some <laughs> streaming app. It'll be on their sports package so that's fine it'll also be playing on nwslsoccer.com which is uh, if you're international so if you are located somewhere outside of the u.s you will be able to watch it there or if you can make it look like you are somewhere outside of the u.s you can watch <laughs> you can watch it there i know a couple of people that that have to do that work around um if you are on I the won't road tell you how but i will tell you there are ways <laughs> there, there are ways search vpn and google it and good luck <laughs> iHeartRadio, if you're not going to be able to watch it and can listen, download the iHeartRadio app. There's an ACFC channel on there. If you just click onto it right now, you're going to get like some random game replay or it's probably this last game. It's just going to be on a loop. So you'll hear it all the time. But come game time, you will get our local announcers, our local radio announcers. They'll have all the insight. You know, they're not going to be this even keeled national oh, broadcast are, yeah no they are angel city all the way you'll get pre-game post-game halftime like you get so much information out of them and they're they're great absolutely yeah. great and then we have a kwkw will be the spanish radio <laughs> broadcast it's not always broadcast on spanish radio but this one granted it is the latin american heritage night it's going to be on spanish radio so it will be on kwkw <laughs> Alrighty. If you made so it this if, far. Yeah, if you've made it this far, thank you. Thank you so much. If you've liked us this far, if you listened this far, if you haven't subscribed already, please do so on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, and all the other places that podcasts exist. Um, you can check out casualfc.com for all the links to us on the internet. You can follow us on just about every social media platform that starts with a T. And also Instagram, so Twitter, Threads, and TikTok. Like we said in the last episode, you will pry that bird out of my cold dead hands. <laughs> I will not call it anything but Twitter. But at Casual FC Pod is where you can find us. You can also follow each of us individually. Our our bio at the Casual FC Pod has both of our Instagrams. If you've listened this far and you like what you hear, please feel free to tell a friend. We've been harping on the fact that we think this brings good luck because as long as we've been talking about it, we've been winning or undefeated. So keep excuse, telling excuse people me? about excuse it. Excuse me? Excuse oh, me? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I misspoke. Undetweeted. There My bad. <laughs> My bad. You need to trademark it. Like, that's yours. You are the person who came up with this. But please, please keep telling people about it. We We just want to spread the word about women's soccer, but specifically Angel City. And then if you feel so inclined, feel free to support the pod by buying us a coffee. You can check out our link in all of our social media bios or go to buymeacoffee.com slash casual FC pod. And you can also buy merch at shop.casualfc.com. And we're adding things by the minute, it feels like. So anytime you never we, know. But, anytime yeah, we have anytime a fun, dumb us, idea. Yeah. <laughs> Mario makes a shirt and I don't hate it <laughs> I mean as we were talking I I'm showing Angela on like we record this online so we can see each other but there's no video component to this but I did sketch out it. I feel the need yes. the need for tweed 
Yep. So that might be a shirt coming soon. It might be a shirt. And if it is, Richie, don't worry. I will buy one for you. Like, I will gift you this shirt. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody. I hope you enjoyed this episode. I hope you laughed a lot along with us. That was hard to say. <laughs> but I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you enjoy have a great time at the game. Um, I'll be in 227 if you want to come find me and say hi. Or if you just don't want to that's fine too but it's a lot of fun (laughs) i will be watching from home cheering on with every might i can and anthony hope you enjoy the game all right everyone bye bye